Hello and a very warm welcome. My name is Odo Sendaidokai and in this video I talk about the ADSR envelope in more detail than tutorials like this usually do. The video is part of a series about envelope and modulation curves. The episodes mostly build on each other so it makes more sense to watch the videos in the right order. The playlist can be found in the video description. It would be great if you would leave me a like and a subscription, but let's get started. As said, this episode is a follow-up of the series Envelopes and Modulation Curves with the focus on ADSR. For better understanding of the similarities and possibilities of envelopes, it would be better to watch the episodes in the correct order. What is it about? Envelopes are describing a parameter change in time and intensity. The most common envelopes is the ADSR envelope, used with the volume or the more historical term amplifier. It is not only found in synthesizers, but also in samplers. Actually, in all devices that offer a more comfortable playback of a sound. The most common use is in volume, but this is only one area of many. Depending on the possibilities of the device, like synthesizers or samplers, any envelope can also be linked to other parameters, like for example filter pitch or to many other parameters. In the following, I will basically use the ADSR envelope as an example of a volume to keep it clear and simple. This scenario is found on nearly every synthesizer. What does ADSR stand for and what are the different ADSR envelopes? ADSR. The A stands for attack, the speed or the time how fast a sound raises from soft to loud. A short time setting is a fast attack and a longer time is a very slow attack. D stands for decay and is the time or the speed for the volume to decay to the sustain level. The S stands for sustain, holding the volume on a specific level as long as the key is pressed or the note is held. R stands for release, the time or speed it takes for a note to fade out when the note ends or the key is released. So attack is the time from soft to loud, then decay is the time from loud to a sustain level, and then when the note ends or the key is released, the release comes into place and determines how long the sound takes to fade out. Sustain is the only parameter that has nothing to do with time. It simply describes a level or volume between minimum and maximum that is held until the note ends. In my case, because I'm working with volume, the level, how loud the note is played. There are often other variations of ADSR envelopes. Some may seem outdated, but it is important to look at them in the context of history and especially in the context of hardware or analog synthesizers. In the 1960s to 90s, there were simply technical and financial limitations that were later easily jumped over by digital synthesizers and DAWs. Here are a few variations that can still be found in many places. DAH DSR Delay, Attack, Hold, Decay, Sustain, Release Here the standard ADSR envelope is extended at the beginning by the parameter D for delay, which ensures that the attack phase is started delay by defined delay time. After the attack phase follows a defined hold phase in time after which the decay phase starts. AD, attack and decay and no sustain. The sound stops immediately after the decay phase has ended. The entire envelope is run through no matter how long a key is pressed. AR, so attack and release. This envelope has no decay. The sound is held at the maximum level as long as the key is pressed. There is as well no S for sustain in the envelope, but the note is held at its fully maximum until it ends and running the release phase. The plug, which has attack, decay and release. Here too no sustain value can be set. The plug envelope is good for performing, for example, the decay can be longer than the release. 
A short tap on the key produces a short tone, which ideally goes directly from the attack to the release phase, without even starting with the decay phase. The tone length can of course be um, varied depending on when the key is released in the decay phase and goes into a short release phase. Of course, decay and release times can be reversed. So the decay is short and the release is long. If the key is now released very quickly, the sound will be longer with a long release than if the key was held longer with the shorter decay. A, D, S, attack, decay and sustain without a release. There are two different versions. One exactly A, D, S, so when the key is released, the sound is also silenced. And there is this envelope with a repeated decay phase at the end. So if you, if you like an ADSD, that means the decay phase is defined once and is valid after the attack phase and after the sustain phase. ADBDR, attack, decay one, break, decay two, release. Interesting here is the part DK1, break DK2. Break defines a volume level like sustain does, from which DK1 changes to DK2. In practice, the velocity becomes very important here. If a note is hit harder, the break comes later. But if the note is hit softer, the break comes earlier before it goes into another defined decay phase and finally into the release phase. Analog and digital. With ADSR or DAHDSR envelopes, there's often the choice between an analog and a digital version. The difference is to be found in the individual phases like attack, decay, release, which run over proportionally, thus convex, or under proportionally, thus concave. Like an abrupt acceleration and a slow deceleration, or a slow acceleration and an abrupt deceleration. With the analog version, the envelope curves are fixed. With the digital ADSR, the individual curves of attack, decay and release can be changed from a linear curve into a concave or convex curve. So with a concave attack, the sound becomes underproportionally slow at the beginning and overproportionally louder towards the end. And with convex, the volume will raise in the beginning faster and towards the end slower. There are other variants with parameters like raise and fall or slew, which also leads to more concave or more convex curves. Now a few common simple amp so volume ADSR sounds as they can be found as presets in many synthesizers. D-click, a long attack to avoid a click sound at the beginning. The lead or gate sound, fast attack, long decay and a very high sustain and only a little release to avoid a click sound. The pet sound, mostly a sawtooth wave, Long attack, a long decay, professionals set the system level a bit lower, long release, and of course the pad can be refined with unison detuning, vibration detuning, and a low pass filter 12 or 24 dB per octave reverb delay chorus and so on. The plug sound sequence or pizzicato sound, mostly triangle wave, extremely short attack, a bit of decay, no sustain, no release, and can be uh, can still be refined with a delay. The string or bell sound, fast attack, decay and release times set to correspond to the swinging of a string or a bell. A piano sound, similar to string or bell sound, fast attack, very long decay, no sustain and hardly any release. Maybe just attack and release to avoid clicks. A bass sound. Basses can have many different settings depending on what they do in a track. As a standard, you could set a not so fast attack, no decay, 
sustain to maximum and a bit of release. For basses that sometimes have longer sustained notes and do not have a carrying role in the track, it is often quite clever to have the decay a bit longer and the sustain a bit lower. If you like to keep seeing videos like this, give me a like and subscribe to the channel. My name is Odo Sendai Dukai. Thanks for watching and paying attention. And if you have any other questions or feedback or you've noticed anything unusual, let me know in the comments. I hope to see you soon again in the next video. Stay healthy, save the future, take care. See you then. Ciao, ciao.